Libya, Saudi Arabia, China, Qatar, and the United States markets are plummeting today in a, what seems to be a global sell-off. In the United States, there was a bigger point loss today than in September 2008 during the housing market crash. In China, their government directed state pension holdings to the market to stop this slide, and the markets are still down. The mainstream media is sending all these complicated mumbo-jumbo words to disinfo you, but in this video, in simple terms, we're going to explain to you why this is happening and how this is happening. Now, how did this all happen? And many people in the United States are pointing their finger at the fake fractional reserve banking system. The fact that we're printing trillions of dollars, that we're in $18 trillion debt, that we're keeping interest rates artificially low, and that the fact that there's decades of just bogus numbers and failed Fed policies, with that on top of aggressive US foreign policy trying to keep the US hegemony and the US petrodollar as the world reserve currency. Now, if you remember just a few days ago, Secretary of State John Kerry said that the US dollar will lose its place as the world reserve currency if the US Iranian nuclear deal does not go through. Now number one, how are the two related with the Iranian nuclear deal and the US petrodollar? But just with that simple comment alone, he just told you how fragile the US world reserve currency, the petrodollar, is in the world market and how unstable it is on how any moment that could end. And when that ends, the US economy is totally screwed. Now, when you look at American foreign policy, any country that threatens American's petrodollar or the US dollar being the world's reserve currency is either bombed, overthrown, destabilized, or just freaking overthrown. Perfect example of that is Syria, Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, and Russia. If you've been watching our YouTube channel, you could see in great detail how we went over every country's geopolitical action that resulted in the United States either sending in sanctions, rebels, overthrowing their government, or either just bombing the crap out of them and taking everything that they could. Let's not forget how Secretary of State John Kerry met with Prince Abdullah of Saudi Arabia last year in September to destabilize Russia's oil-driven economy. They met in a meeting and they decided to flood the market with Saudi Arabian oil, devaluing the worth of it. And with Russia's economy being 50% based on oil exports, they pretty much helped destroy the ruble. And of course, there's a lot of geopolitical strategies here that at the time made sense, but now it's having an effect on our economy with the cheap price of oil as it stands right now. The United States obviously has a lot of conflicts with Russia when it comes to Ukraine, Saudi Arabia, and Iran obviously dislike each other a lot, and they're making all these key political economic moves to destabilize and hurt the other countries. But we're seeing the effects now with how cheap oil is. And yeah, of course, you didn't hear this anywhere on the mainstream media, but last year we released a full detailed video with all the sources and facts telling you exactly why the price of oil was so low. You could actually click on the annotation inside this video and just, just go see it now, because you need to. Now, why is this happening? Many people are pointing their fingers at China. Other people on the mainstream media are saying that this is a natural revaluation of the market that's hiding bad numbers, which will eventually adjust and return turn to their true value instead of their fake value. There's other people also online who are saying that there's a bigger play here by the elites who are colluding together on a massive market sell-off that drops the stocks, has people panicking, selling stocks for pennies on the dollar for cheap so the elites could buy them back for nothing and gain more power and control. And if you look at history, that kind of does make sense since a lot of the global financial players do have a lot of control of these markets and they do manipulate them just for their own personal benefits. Especially when you look at the history of the Rothschilds that became the world's wealthiest family. They did this by lying and manipulating the market. During the Battle of Waterloo, they told the United Kingdom that Napoleon won. The markets crashed in the United Kingdom. They were for nothing. The Rothschilds bought them all up. And when the real news came out that Napoleon lost at the Battle of Waterloo, the stocks went up. And magically, the Rothschilds became the most powerful family in the entire world. Look at the 2008 housing market crash that was engineered by the big banksters who pretty much were rewarded for failing everyone and robbing and looting everyone. And if that's not enough, look what Goldman Sachs did to Greece, artificially inflating their numbers so they could enter the EU, then short selling, predicting their fall, and releasing the real numbers, creating the Hegelian dialect, problem, reality and solution as a way to gain more power, influence, and assets from regular people because these greedy bastards don't have enough. Throughout history, the system for them works very simply. 
the elites create a crash. They either lie and manipulate a situation like they did in Greece, like they did during the housing market crash, or how the Rothschilds lied. Regular people lose their money and their assets. Elites predict a crash, sell off high, buy low, and gain more power by predicting the fall that they engineered themselves. Of course, with the news coming out today, everyone is in total panic mode. Everyone's in chaos, and these people believe in order out of chaos as a way of creating it in a way to get what they want. And if that wasn't evident enough, look how the Wall Street Ponzi scheme market work today. Online trades were halted. Normal people in the market are supposed to take what the market offers while the elites set up short sales and are getting out of the market before the crash, which is just pure evident of how the normal average people who actually put their money in the stock market are getting screwed over by these super traders, by these elites, by the people who actually control everything who are getting out of Dodge. Now, if you have your money or your 401k in the stock market, I don't know what you're thinking investing in a Ponzi scheme that takes away from you and gives to the very few. But you should think of other alternatives like gold and silver or even Bitcoin. Now, of course, they're not perfect in any way, shape, or form. I have a little bit of Bitcoin. I actually invested it in a group mutual community mining pool where you invest and actually buy more mining equipment. If you're interested to learn about that, which I'm still learning about, uh, check out the link below. It would actually help me get a referral. And if I bring you in, I actually get more. But obviously, make your own right financial decisions gold and silver could be manipulated by the elites since they also have a huge investment in it and bitcoin is extremely volatile and some people say is also controlled but you have to make the smart wise decisions for yourself the most wise and biggest investment that you can make that i actually recommend and back is one with your community it's one with the people around you the relationships you have being independent, being off the grid, creating your own gardens, creating your own community watch, having a barter share system is one thing that will safeguard you from all these entire Ponzi schemes and that's something people don't talk about at all. Sure, I can make a little bit of commission on the Bitcoin thing. Sure, I could start selling you gold and silver, but to, to, if you want the real truth, the most important thing you have is each other. And I've seen it firsthand. I've been in Greece where people are beating the crap out of each other, killing each other because of the economic situation there. Where grandmas are online at banks crying with their prayer beads because they can't even get their pension out to feed themselves or their families. I was in Tokyo where the suicide rate is so high because of the poor economic situation there that the government started fining families hundreds of thousands of dollars if a family member kills themselves. I was in Puerto Rico and I saw families abandoned and in their families have because of a mass migration because of the economic situation there. I saw it firsthand and if you think it can affect you, I don't know what you're thinking. I saw the pain and suffering in real life only because of evil, maniacal, Satan cocksucking, unhuman pieces of trash that will suck the life and humanity out of everything good so their empty souls and ego-filled existences could have a fucking bigger boat. And the only thing that could stop them is the truth and you not complying in their Ponzi scheme rig system that is meant to take away from you.